So we've looked at the role of central banks and we focus more on banking supervision, uh, financial stability, financial inclusion. I want to move over to the price stability piece because this is such a topical issue. Inflation is a global phenomenon. It's not peculiar to Africa, even though countries like Nigeria are trailing over 30%. But you have other countries in emerging economies who are doing 45% and so on. So it's, it's a worldwide problem. How are Africa's monetary authorities uh, doing? in terms of managing and controlling inflation. And some of this is imported, energy prices, food prices. How well, you know, how would you assess the track yeah, record? Yeah, that's a tough question. We like it is, and, uh, 54 countries. No, that's OK. I, I think uh, for the most part, African central bankers are very conscious of their responsibility in terms of price stability. And so these shocks that uh, came through, COVID shock, post, particularly post-COVID, mm -hmm. right? Uh, with the supply uh, chain shocks, et cetera, constraints. Um, then, of course, the Ukrainian war or the war in Ukraine. So food prices, mm. uh, wheat, et cetera, and other things. Um, all those shocks came to us from the outside. Mm. And, uh, and uh, m virtually all central bankers uh, in Africa understood that they cannot do nothing, you know, and not just allow these prices to, uh, I mean, inflation to just be imported into their countries, etc. So they try to do uh, what they can do with the tools that they have. Now, some have been more successful, others less so. And so you have a variety of countries. Some of them are in the 5%, less than 5% uh, inflation annual. They are there now. Mm. Um, Kenya is actually at just below, f it's like 4.4 or something like that. Um, Uganda is also down there. Mm. Um, and then you have others, the whole, and then you have others in the tens, and then you have countries like uh, Nigeria, you know, 33%. Now, the impact of this, first and foremost, is to the weakest in the economy. Mm. So inflation is such a bad tax because it hurts the weakest the most. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we cannot just let it, uh, let it be. Yes. Yeah? Um, second, so that is one thing. And, uh, but then also when inflation becomes high, and remains high for a period of time. And you, the various people in the country become more conscious about inflation. And they begin to take action, or let's say, to hedge against inflation. And this, for instance, ends up indexing prices. Yeah? Um, or, you know, for instance, in the worst case, you know, prices are indexed in US dollars. Yes. So like rents here, for instance. I mean. So it's clear that they are trying to hedge against that. Then you have other things, of course. You know, they all want dollars. Mm -hmm. Nobody and that has its own consequences on the exchange exactly, rates. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you also have these guys are going to crypto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, hedging. Uh, they can say whatever they want. This is just a, a, an asset class mm -hmm. that allows you to do various things, including hedging. Yes. Uh, so I'm making the point that those things, in effect, weaken the economy or the specific economy, and also weaken the effectiveness of monetary policy. Mm. This is why central banks cannot, well, let's say, it would be so damaging when mm. central banks sort of ignore inflation for an extended period and do nothing. So that's the general point. And maybe just to finish, mm. Uh, I think the, one of the things that we need to do more yeah. is to expand our tools Absolutely. And, and have Good clarity point. about what is it that we are doing and to speak more mm. about what we are doing as central bankers. Now I'm talking on their behalf and I'm <laughs> just uh, outside that space. Yeah. They need to talk more about what they are doing and explain to the population what their objective really is. Absolutely. And I think you make a good point on communication because mm. the, the key with monetary policy tools, it, 
the way you use them impacts market sentiment yes. and investor sentiment. Mm -hmm. So signaling is, is quite a big deal. But there's also the issue about the true cause of inflation in economies like Africa or Kenya, in, in like Nigeria or Kenya, I beg your pardon, and whether monetary policy is a sufficient tool. Mm -hmm. It's necessary, but not sufficient in itself to curb inflation, particularly where you have broader structural and macro issues. So which which one of those factors are playing hard and now in Africa's biggest economies? Yeah. Um, some would argue here in Nigeria, inflation is a structural problem. Yeah, Rocky, you're, you're asking me like uh, <laughs> my professor. Professor you know, of economics PhD. in the seat. Yeah, so <laughs> you are the professor and I'm the student. Um, you are right, some of the, the sources of inflation are varied, mm -hmm. yeah? One of the sources, as I mentioned before, is this thing of imported inflation through sure. uh, food prices, wheat, etc. Mm -hmm. Through, but I think also here agricultural prices. So when there is a, um, a the harvests are bad or whatever mm -hmm. else it is, yes. and the cost of production is rising, etc. Obviously, that is uh, that food inflation is felt by the consumer. Yeah. So you can say monetary policy doesn't have much impact on that, mm. you know, which is, I think, the point you are making. And that is true. But what we need to do is you allow generally good monetary, good central bankers who allow the first, um, the first effects to go through, okay. but then resist the second order effects. Okay. And that's basically it. So you could then have prices will go up mm. um, in particularly on those products, because yes. they, they are not there. There's a shortage of supply, but uh, they won't have a knock-on effect, or you reduce, you'll try and mute the knock-on effect on other things. So that's basically the sense of monetary policy. That's the way it mm. should be done. However, so I've talked about agriculture. I've talked about uh, imported uh, inflation. Mm. But I think there is also the, other, the third one, which maybe is also now looking at the newspapers I, here has been significant. Mm. Um, but maybe let's talk about uh, the price of oil. Yes. Yeah, the, mm. the price, the pump price. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this has a knock-on effect on uh, transportation, for instance. And transportation and you know, price of agriculture, if you're doing mechanized agriculture, that's a major input, et cetera. Mm. And also here, with all the diesel generators that are going on, mm. I mean, they, it really affects the cost of production. Yes. Um, so I think the point I'm making is the same applies there. And what we have to do then is to deal with the problem head on. Mm. Don't use second order uh, solutions. To you know, don't use second. <laughs> yeah, so s deal with the first order solutions. So, mm. for instance, diesel, it's quite clear what needs to be done. Mm. And uh, by the way, one of the things that I learned from my first trip here, I was very lucky to be invited to tour the refinery, mm. the new refinery, that uh, the Dangote refinery. Mm. And I was just blown away by the courage by the potential mm. etc of resolving no longer just Nigeria's problems but actually Africa's problems yes. on uh, you know supply of a pretty important commodity uh, mm. for all of us so I think that would help at least anchor mm. the you know the, the supply and indeed therefore the price on mm. diesel um, but obviously having Anyway, so I, I think it is uh, it's something, the same applies with agriculture. Absolutely. Yeah, so the way to do with agriculture is increase supply. Yes. Um, agriculture should no longer be a social sector. Mm. It should really be a productive sector. sector. Yeah.